It's been a long time since I've done a paleo list, so why not bring them back now? Today we are going to talk about the very basis of paleontology, fossils. All too often we forget how these pieces of rock are literal snapshots or pictures into the story of life on Earth. They document the lives and lifestyles of the organisms that existed at a certain time period. Most fossils might seem like boring portraits or still lifes, but today I'd like to examine some of, in my opinion, the most interesting fossils we have currently. The fossils that preserve action. That's right, we are going to examine fossils that preserve literal fights between some primeval animals. Fights we have actual evidence of. These aren't your fantasy movie dino fights, these really happened. These fossils are like videos that have recorded the battles and events that happen in these animals' lives and the conflicts they have with other animals on a normal basis. Or, in other words, who ate who. So sit back because today we have the top 13 fossils that preserve fights between prehistoric animals. Warning, the following video might be graphic to some of you- Oh, shut the heck up! Dinosuchus is quite famous in the paleontological community. This late Cretaceous terrible crocodile, as the name implies, could reach lengths up to 35 feet, meaning it was massive and terrifying. It's been featured in numerous movies and documentaries, and can often be seen ambushing dinosaurs like how modern crocs ambush wildebeest, just on a way, way bigger scale. Often these prey items are hadrosaurs, large herbivorous dinosaurs, such as the horned-headed Parasaurolophus. But the question remains, does this monster croc have any evidence it had a bite? Actually, yes. In 2009, a hadrosaur vertebra possessed a bite mark from an enormous predator, Dinosuchus. The bite clearly shows that this giant croc preyed on giant dinosaurs. So far, the hadrosaur that was attacked is not determined, so it is unclear what type of hadrosaur it was. Nevertheless, we have evidence to substantiate the portrayals of these giant crocodilians lunging out of the water at unlucky dinosaurs, so often seen in those movies and documentaries. When lions fought bears. As it turns out, you don't need to go too far back in time to hear such a bizarre statement and for it to be true. It is surprising to think that just until 24,000 years ago, both lions and bears once lived alongside one of another. The cave lion, or step lion, and the cave bear both inhabited Europe and Asia, and we have evidence they often clashed with one another. In caves belonging to hibernating cave bears, fully articulate skeletons of cave lions have been found, suggesting the lions preyed on the bears during their slumber and died in doing so. We also have cave bear femurs, which bear uh, the bite marks of a lion. In addition to lions, hyenas, which also inhabited the regions, at the very least scavenged off of bear carcasses. Numerous crushed skulls and bones reveal these cave bears were more often the prey of these laughing predators than to lions. The Ice Age was an interesting time when, what we consider African animals, coexisted and fought ones from the north. Plesiosaurs, the long-necked marine reptiles that flourished during the Mesozoic, are often depicted eating fish and squids. But these creatures actually did prey on some much more interesting animals. Pterosaurs. In the Neobrara formation, the stomach contents of a plesiosaur reveal that it ate pterosaur bones. It appears even flying furry reptiles aren't safe from these guys. Poor pterosaurs seem to be preyed upon by a lot of things. This time, not a plesiosaur, but a fish. Fossil specimen WDC-CSG-25 from the late Jurassic period shows a remarkable three-way food chain frozen in time. The fossil specimen preserves a small Rhamphorhynchus pterosaur with a Leptolepides lodged in its throat. This Rhamphorhynchus was flying low or rested on the top of the water, devouring its meal, when suddenly a large Aspidorhynchus took advantage of the pterosaur's supper and punctured the pterosaur's wing membrane with its rostrum or snout. This unfortunately trapped both animals together as they both thrashed around in the water until they died of exhaustion and lack of oxygen, when the three corpses sank to the bottom of the ocean and preserved this spectacular fossil. All too often we get this image that the mammals were always the underdogs during the reign of the dinosaurs, but in reality some mammals were big enough to even bully some dinos. Rupermimamus was a dog-sized mammal from the early Cretaceous that lived in China. This was large for a mammal at the time and means that it likely was able to take down some small dinosaurs. And that's exactly what a fossil of Rupermimamus found. The stomach contents of one specimen displayed clear evidence that the mammal recently ate an entire juvenile Cetacosaurus. Cetacosauruses were medium-sized dinosaurs related to ceratopsids, like protoceratops and triceratops. They possessed quill-like feathers on their tails, and were obviously preyed upon by our early distant relatives. Like how modern foxes and coyotes prey on baby rabbits and fawns, so did Ripinomamus did with small dinosaurs. Hesperonis were penguin-like birds that lived on the coastal shores and oceans of the Lake Cretaceous. These flightless avians could reach up around 5.9 feet in length, and would resemble the loons or waterbirds of modern day. 
but unlike modern birds, they possessed sharp teeth in their beaks to catch prey. Living alongside them in their habitat was the massive Tylosaurus, marine reptiles that were closest related to modern day snakes, which possessed a fish-like fluke and two sets of jaws. They were huge, probably most comparable in size to modern whales. Many fossils show they ate fish and sharks, but we also have direct evidence these scaly predators preyed on birds too. A Tylosaurus specimen was reported to have the bones of a Hesperonis inside its stomach. Like how orcas ate seals, so did mosasaurs and Hesperonises. The world famous weirdo dino Spinosaurus has been pictured fighting in combat many different foes over the years, most notably T Rex, which would be impossible because they inhabited entirely different continents million years apart from each other, but that's besides the point. We do have direct evidence Spinosaurus did battle, in my opinion, a crazier enemy. Oncopristes. Oncopristes was a truly colossus of a fish growing up to 26 feet long. It would most resemble sawfish and saw sharks of modern day, with a barbed rostrum that was 8 feet long. Who could prey on such a monster? Well, an even larger monster. Spinosaurus, the humongous spine-backed dinosaur, has direct evidence it preyed on such outrageous animals, with the vertebra of such a fish embedded in the jaw of a spino, with a tooth erupting out of it. Zephactinus was a truly a leviathan of an animal. A bulldog of a fish, Zephactinus could grow as large as 20 feet in length, with large, terrifying fangs to match. One fossil in particular stands as a testament to this strange fish's curiosity. A very famous and almost perfectly preserved fossil of a 13 foot long Zephactinus shows that the fish was swallowing another fish. A 6 foot long Gillicus was discovered directly inside the larger fish. It is likely the Zephactinus died while trying to swallow the smaller one, probably due to the gillus rupturing one of its organs, killing it, and causing the two fish to sink to the bottom, where they would be preserved as fossils. Somewhat also impressive is another fossil of a Zephactinus that was found with a Mosasaur flipper between its jaws. T-Rex, finally we get to talk about this superstar. Tyrannosaurus rex doesn't really need an introduction, and that's basically the same thing with Triceratops too. The two famous dinos inhabited the same habitat at the same time, in the Lake Cretaceous, North America. But do we have any evidence these often paired adversaries actually battled? Uh, actually yes. We have quite numerous amounts of evidence of predator-prey relations between the two animals. The pelvis of a Triceratops was discovered to have bite marks attributed to a T-Rex. Another described bite marks and lesions on the broken horn and skull of a Triceratops, likely also caused by a Rex. And at SVP 2012, a paleontologist noted a pattern in the evidence that T-Rexes commonly tore off the frills of Triceratopses to eat them with deep bite marks on the frills of numerous individuals, suggesting T-Rex regularly did this when eating Triceratopses. In the situation where T-Rex bite marks were described on the broken horn and skull of a Triceratops, interestingly, the Triceratops seemed to have survived the encounter, with healing and new bone growth being visible in the fossil in the damaged areas leading to the likelihood that T-Rex was attacking a living individual, in contrast to previous scavenger theories concerning Rex. Lastly, probably the best evidence of T-Rex and Triceratops predation comes from a famous fossil called the Montana Dueling Dinosaurs, which preserved, as the name implies, two dinos dueling in combat. One is a Tyrannosaurid, possibly a juvenile to subadult T-Rex, nicknamed Bloody Mary, and the other being a much larger Triceratops. It is an amazing fossil that unfortunately has very little written about it, due to it remaining in private hands. The fossil is currently in limbo after a failed auction, so it might be a little while until we learn more about it, or when it will be properly described. Nevertheless, the evidence Tyrannosauruses and Triceratops battled is pretty strong. You always hear theories concerning the dome skull of Pachycephalosaurus, and since their discovery, it has been very much debated if they use such skulls for agonistic behaviors like headbutting other Pachys, like the ram or musk ox of modern day. It wasn't until 2012, a study which examined the skulls of adult Pachycephalosaurus found something very interesting. The study found 22% of Pachycephalosaurus had lesions caused by trauma to the tissue underlining the skulls, leading to infection. Some specimens had up to 23 different lesions on the frontal bones on their skulls. The overwhelming amount of members with these lesions and the large amount of lesions per individual has led strong support to the theory that Pachys used their cranial structures for ergonistic behavior. It is very likely these dinos did indeed butt heads. An interesting thing to note is that Pachycephalosaurids, with relatively flat heads lacking domes, lack these lesions entirely. Some have theorized that these flat-headed Pachys represent females or juveniles of the same species, and the head budding is only exhibited in males or adults. 
Yes, T-Rex is back again, this time hunting a different prey item, the massive Hell Creek Hadrosaur Anatosaurus. Or Admonosaurus Anectens. Whatever, really. Is there any evidence T-Rex and Anato fought? Well, obviously, if you're on this list, you freaking moronic ha- Just like with T-Rex and Triceratops, we have numerous evidences T-Rex has preyed on Anatosauruses. In 2013, a likely Anatosaurus vertebra was described to have Tyrannosaur teeth embedded in it. A section of Anatosaurus skin possessed scar tissue resulting likely from a Tyrannosaurus bite. And lastly, in one Anatosaur neural spine on its tail, there appears to be a break likely caused also by a Rex bite. Again, interestingly, the bone regrew around the injury and healed, further supporting that the T-Rex was not a scavenger, but actually was an active hunter which did take down live prey items, and big ones at that. Well, you all knew this one was coming. I mean, who could forget the incredible famous fighting dinosaurs fossil from Mongolia? This amazing fossil is one of the world's most famous dino fossils, and with good reason. It preserved everyone's favorite feathered winged dromaeosaur, Velociraptor, locked in combat with a protoceratops, a small hornless ceratopsid. Found in 1971, this fossil was the first direct evidence of predatory behavior in dinosaurs in general, I believe. The late Cretaceous fossil shows clearly these two animals were in a fight to the death, the Velociraptor clawing with its infamous sickle claw somewhere around the throat area of the Protoceratops, one hand clutching the skull of the Protoceratops, while the other is being crushed by the Ceratops' parrot-like beak. It appears the two adversaries were killed almost instantly, preserving their perfect lifelike poses almost exactly as they were while the animals were still duking it out over 70 million years ago. It is likely a collapsing dune fell on these animals during the middle of the battle, covering them and suffocating them with sand, but leaving them in the same position they were in so long ago. Ah, you thought that one was number one, didn't you? Well, I got a way better number one in store for you guys. Allosaurus, the Lion of the Jurassic, was a very large and famous theropod. It shared its environment and time period with the incredibly famous and bizarre looking Stegosaurus. These two buddies are commonly seen hanging out, trying to kill each other in pop culture and shows like Walking with Dinosaurs. But, is there any evidence to back it up? Yes, yes indeed. A stegosaur neck plate possessed a U-shaped bite mark taken out of it, most likely caused by an allosaurus. And, most shocking of all, we have direct evidence of the very first nut shot in history. An allosaurus tail vertebra was discovered to have healed from a puncture wound that fit the size and shape of a stegosaurus thagomizer, or tail spine, meaning this allosaurus was stabbed in the crotch by a stegosaur and survived. Crap. Over a hundred million years later and I feel for you, allosaur. I feel for you. We will remember you, random allosaur with spike and crotch. I wonder how that event went for the allosaur and what he was thinking when it happened. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. There are countless other direct evidence of prehistoric fossil fights throughout history and too much to cover in one video. Maybe a part two will be made in the future, but until then, I've been Trey the Explainer and thank you so much for walking my top 13 prehistoric fights. We knew. Really happened. Alright, bye. See you in another video. Evolution's a natural process, but it's not exactly the fastest. You can reach your potential.